Yo, 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 it's your boy Nikki Doucet, a.k.a. Mr. Black Podcast himself. Uh, this is no disrespect and shit. It's been a while, but shit, we back at it, y'all. Hi, guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> the- we got two special guests. Uh, as always, we always miss somebody, but shout out to Cootie. Uh, I know y'all been missing her and she's been, obviously, y'all interact with her on Man. Facebook. Uh, if y'all, well, she has everybody interact with her on Facebook. She's famous. But, yeah, she's dumb famous, but she'll be back soon. But shout out to her, um, and shout out to my nigga Suave. He ain't here right now, as always. He probably over here fucking some other whatever, whatever. Whoa! <laughs> like, 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 nah, I'm just playing. Whoa! <laughs> he gonna get, he get these jokes when he's not, not here. That. When he's not here, he get these jokes. Joke. <laughs> he get these jokes. But now, nah, um, but now nah, we got two special guests. Introduce yourselves. They the homies of the crew. Yo, 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 what's up, people? My name is AJ Hood, uh, a.k.a. DJ Esquire, a.k.a. your favorite law student in Cincinnati. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I'm, I'm out here dropping my credentials and whatnot, talking a little bit with my homies. Yeah. What's good, y'all? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't follow up on that one. But I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm TP, you know what I'm saying? I'll be in Bond Hill, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, shout you know, out to Bond Hill, you know what I'm saying? We still a Cincy podcast, even though most of us moved to Atlanta. So <laughs> <laughs> we still out here. We still come back and give back to the people, you know what I'm saying? We still shaking hands and kissing babies. But... Uh, um, speaking of motherfuckers that need to shake hand and kiss babies to get their shit back together. That is not the transition. That's not the transition. That's, well, not that's the transition. I'm going <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. I don't even see where you're going with that one. Go ahead. Uh, I'll let you finish. All right. Well, then now you, since you fucked it up, I'm about to explain myself. <laughs> it's been a while since we've been out. So obviously we got, to, we need to catch up. So this episode is all about us catching up with what's going on with the times in pop culture, specifically in black culture. And obviously we're going to have to start off with the shit that has been hitting the headlines heavy. Which is obviously Drake, a and as and as of music. and as of recently, Nicki, and of course we're gonna get into some more shit. But we're gonna start off with Drake and Nicki specifically, since they both have albums coming out soon. Now, obviously, Drake has the, the his date is uh, closer than Nicki's, which is uh, next, fri- next Friday, well, the twenty ninth, mm-hmm. so the uh, Friday. Um, and what I'm hearing so far is that it's gonna be a double album. So far, it's an A side and a B side, and the theory is that it's gonna be one side is all hip hop. Like all rap, which is something that niggas have been asking Drake to do for years, mm-hmm. and then the other side is gonna be R and B. That's gonna be now. Fire. Back in the day, he always said that he would never do a full rap album. I think it's because he doesn't have enough writers for it. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're going there. there. We going there. You know what I'm saying? It's a black podcast, but I gotta keep it funky. When the shit came out, the shit came out. For anybody um, who doesn't know, the um, this in Toronto they had a whole bunch of billboards that were being uh, put up all around the place. So that's where the side A and side B came from. There was also another one that said. Is there more? Question mark. And these are just black billboards with just words on them. So no, uh, there's no description in terms of what it means, why it's up there. We just know it's an advertisement for his album that's coming out on the 29th. Yeah. So with that being said, and I'm going to put this to the whole group, what are we expecting out of these two projects? Nikki's dropping later on in August, like early August, I believe. She actually pushed it back, she which did. says a lot about me and her career right now. But like as far as Drake and Nikki. Two people who was killing hip hop at one point, and they still are big, but you can obviously see the landscape is changing. So, what do y'all feel about where they at in their careers, or like, what's what do you expect from these? New who albums? do you want to start with, Drake or Nicki? We can start with Drake since he's. Uh, I mean, we can let's start with Nicki because we are gonna end on Drake. Okay. So, with Nicki, in my opinion, she's at a very peculiar point in her t- her uh, career right now because obviously she ain't the top chick in the rap game no more. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, no, as much as, I, I know the, there's barbs out there that would defend her and, and her status and the accolades and the plaques and the hits, and nobody's disagreeing with that, but obviously, shit, right now, it's looking real quiet for Nicki when it comes to, like, her being that motherfucker on top. Like, mm-hmm. that represent a female MC in the game, or just MC, period. And with the singles that she's dropped since her last album, which is The Pink Print, mm-hmm. only what? One has hit Chung Lee, which was ass. I guess. Uh, I, guess. Like, um, she, I mean, she used to be the queen for eight summers, but in terms of the songs themselves, uh, this is just somebody who used to be a big Nicki Minaj fan. I'm I'm seeing that her visuals are a lot better than her music, mm-hmm. and that's because her obviously she's gone up in her career, so she has a lot more money for a budget, things mm-hmm. like that. So I don't know if you guys seen the Chung Lee video and what's the other thing, um, Barbie Tings. Uh, the videos are very good, in my opinion, just in terms of visuals and things like that. There was different elements that went into it, but the song, eh, I wouldn't play it in the car. <laughs> I don't know, it's just... What, either one of them, Chung Lee or Barbie Tings? Um, if I had to choose between Barbie Tings and Chung Lee, I would choose... Uh, Another artist. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey. 
And no disrespect, she's a black. I'm trying. I'm trying to be pro black. So I love black women. Let's just let's get that out there. Like I ain't For trying. Sure. To, I I'm just. This is just a music critique. I think Nikki is. It's all about music. Yeah, it's, it's all about, about music. Nikki. We're just talking about mu- music right now. I, I don't know I gotta give it up to the Let's, what, yeah. what do y'all think I would choose yeah, Barbie Tings by I, the way I think personally Nikki has a very bad uh, marketing strategy because I feel like she's using like her Twitter platform to like low key fold herself she's explaining these lackluster bars and whatnot, and it's just like you and something my intelligence at this point like with these weak ass bars that you're tweeting like you get it guys like you got it you know what I mean like this is like whack to me and I'm like I'm not really like looking forward to it based off of what you are tweeting right now like I guess that's just me like I, I used to be a Nikki fan too. Like I was back when, like you know what I'm saying, Itty Biggie Piggy. Yeah, you know I mean? miss like, Itty Biggie. I miss Southside Jamaica Queens Nikki. Like you know bring saying? her back. When she was fucking with Gucci. She was the fucking truth. You know what I'm saying? Like or up all night Nikki or like you feel me off the pink parade like like that four door Ventador. Like I, I like rapping Nikki. Like yes. I really like rapping Nikki, but I feel like she's using her point on Twitter to try to make it seem like she's a really good rapper when all you got to do is just put out the music and mm. let it let it be for us. You know what I mean? I for mean, for me, for me personally, man, like I, I've never been a huge Nicki fan. I've always thought she had bars. I've always thought she's been talented as a rapper. Uh, personally, her image for me just wasn't, it wasn't really my thing. I always thought she was really fugazi. She was real fake. <laughs> uh, and that just wasn't ever my thing. But having said that, I will give her props for kind of stepping out the way and let Cardi do her thing. Like she really, she kind of, she rolled out the red carpet for Cardi to let her album come out. What do you, mean, what do you mean by that? I mean, what do you mean by that? I mean, she I think she, she, she kind of, she kind of came when, when the Cardi's album was first coming out. I really remember she kind of stepped out the way and let Cardi have the spotlight. She says, Cardi's going to be like, she She kind of paved the way and let Cardi do her thing. And I really feel like I respect that out of Nicki because I know Nicki knows that she's over the hill at this In point. other words, she could have dropped her music at she, any time she and did some shady shit and just dropped it while Cardi's album was dropping, but chose to kind of hold back a little bit. For the record, I, am I, didn't she drop Two, those two singles during she did. the week that Cardi she did. Album Remember, I, t- I texted you about yeah. that. I was like, dang, she didn't even give uh, Cardi a chance. Cardi dropped her album, and then, you know, Barbie Tings and uh, Chung Lee, they, Chung dropped, Lee, they yeah. came out on the same day with visuals, too. <laughs> Not just the song, it came with visuals. So it was like all the barbs came out the closets, like, yes. To, yes. Me, to me personally, Cardi put the pressure on Nicki. Because you, what basically what I'm saying is like, when you on top and you see no competition, you take your time with your craft. Mm-hmm. However, when you see someone coming up, someone who might take your spot, and not to say that there's there's only can be one black uh, female MC, mm-hmm. but hip hop is all about competition, and everybody wants to be at the top of their field, mm-hmm. regardless of who who uh, a rival who can uh, take their spot out. But for me, it's like when Cardi came up, people really started questioning Nicki's like presence in hip hop. Like it's because like. Since there isn't, there's only a few amount of uh, female MCs out there. When you're number one, you stick out like a sore thumb. But when you see somebody else, they'll be like, you know what? Nikki really ain't that fly like this other girl. Or like, Nikki really ain't making hits that, like she used to. It's just like, now it's like, okay, people doubt my talent. Now, with the pressure on me, I have to come back harder. And, to, and yeah. since she's had that pressure on her, she's only dropped, what, one gem out of five coals and I'm, when I say coals it's like pressure makes diamonds they bust pipes so right now she's only got one diamond the rest of them like nobody's talking about the uh, no frauds nobody's talking about uh, change that song she did with one. like she dropped what's more. the name of the song that she just did with Lil Wayne oh Rich Sex nobody's talking about Rich Sex like nobody's really talking about these records outside of Chung Lee which makes me to see which makes me see that her time has come and gone and now she needs to figure out how she can just stay afloat in this rap game. Yeah. Cause I'm not cause just because you ain't number one doesn't mean you can't still be hot. It's just more as you have to realign your career. Cause everybody runs everybody in hip hop run uh, has a run that ends. Like Jay Z had a run that ended. Drake, we're trying to see, has a run that ended. Uh Kanye had a run that ended. Wayne had a run that ended. Like everybody has I runs. I disagree with that, but I think that's for another topic about Kanye. All right, we'll, 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 we'll see about and that. In this case, we're just using Cardi B as an example in terms of other MCs. There's other female MCs out there who uh, Asian Doll just got signed to uh, 1017, right? Yes, yes. So you know oh, she's she not as brood. big as Cardi, but you know you got to take your baby no, steps. So there's other women there's, out there. There's who's... a lot of like I like right now. The one I like is Rico Nasty. Yes, she, she's, she's crazy. She, she looks crazy, crazy, but she got some dope records. Obviously, you got to shout out to. Rhapsody, obviously you gotta shout out mm-hmm. to Jane Gray and shit like that. So there's girls but, coming up, so she gotta, she can't, she's not about to be the queen, Nikki in, um, is what I'm talking about. It's not about to be the queen for eight summers anymore. She She's not about to be the only one getting that BET and, <laughs> Best Female MC and my award. Thing, what I'm expected, go back to the question, what I'm expecting out of her new album is more about, I was hoping that she wouldn't call this album Queen, but she'll call it Nikki. 
just the same, almost to the same sentiment about like what Nas did with his album by calling it Nas Zero or Jay Z did with Four Four Four. Like, make this your most personal album, like ever, because even though you dropped some stuff about like your history and your past, right now you at a uh, you're at a uh, specific spot in hip hop where we don't really know that much about Nicki personally. Like, we've heard some things, we've we've read some things. We obviously know that she was in a relationship with Meek. And she was in one relationship with Safari. Even her Nas. background, like being from Trinidad and her family, yeah, like her like, family home burning down when she was a kid and stuff like that. But like, nobody really knows unless you really a fan and done your research. But like put that in the music. And to me, that will gravitate, that will put Nikki in another spot of her career. Because obviously we already, she's well established. This is what her, want to be her fourth or fifth album? Because uh, she had Fr- Friday, she had Pink Friday, she had Roma's Revenge. Yeah, there the was another album time. in between that, wasn't that? Was between like Roman Revenge and this one. But that was, oh, that was like an EP though. Okay, okay, that's what that but was. But like this is, her, this is her fourth album. And right now, I can't really tell you <clears> much <throat> about Nicki in, in the landscape. And the reason why I say that, in the landscape of hip-hop these days, you have to sell more than just bars. Like if you want to be an artist, you have to be a lifestyle. Just exactly. like just like with Nike, Nike is a lifestyle brand. It's not just about running shoes. That's what they started off with. But now it's a lifestyle brand. You can wear Nike anywhere. Like you can wear joggers. You can wear hat. Like you know what I'm saying. It's a lifestyle brand. So right now, Nikki's in her lifestyle brand stage. Can I ask y'all this? Uh, what was the lifestyle that Nikki was actually portraying before like this album? She had she had acts. Remember, like, she, she was the character. She was right. That's where Roman yeah. Revenge came from. Roman was a character, one of her personas. Right, um, right. There was Martha. That was another one of her personas. It was like she had a whole bunch of different characters that she was following that even me, and I only know that because when I was a big Nikki fan, those were the big characters that I followed um, when she first came out, at least. And it was different. It was nobody in the rap game ever did that before. And I think she felt like she had to do that just as a female. You know, she had to get her name out there. But um that was, and I remember when she made that change from like crazy Nikki with the crazy hairstyles mm-hmm. and the, the crazy outfits to now that one day when she came out, I think she was the VMAs or something. She had the long black hair, very sleek, very clean yeah, cut put together. She became Onika at that moment, right? Yeah. Same thing that Lady Gaga did, kind of switched their image. I don't know if that hurt her. It's because the because that character stuff goes, oh, it gets old after right. a while. Like, nobody yeah, wants, to, saying, nobody wants to hear that. Random ass like British accent, Tourette's ass syndrome <laughs> shit that she was usually do- like. It was fire at the time, but now it's just like nigga. It's just, it just came off as inauthentic, yes, inauthentic, exactly. and it was just like you know that the whole reason I didn't fool with Nikki like that was just because she was she was full gazy, she was fake, like in my opinion. <laughs> and I just I've never really picked up on her since because them character things that shit was well, tired see, to me. Like for me, like I I fucked with the uh, like the whole persona thing, but like I feel like. Once you have a specific lifestyle that you have to live, you have to live up to that. You know what I mean? Like at this point, I feel like she was acting soft at this point. She was dissing. I mean, she was dissing Cardi. Well, not necessarily dissing, but she was crying about like you know the whole her, uh, yeah, uh, holding her up the motorsport yeah. situation, and then like go right after that interview, going like, yeah, you broke bitches or whatever. I mean, not necessarily in those words, but like she was definitely talking down on people. And I feel like yeah, you're you're kind of fugazi for real for that. Like at this point in your life, like you can do better. Hey, so so what are y'all expecting out of like are, if y'all even looking forward to it but she like what would you want to hear what would you want to hear from Nikki? Now? she said it's her best work ever that's a lot those are big words everybody say. says that every hour <laughs> i just want i'm just looking for transparency honestly like you touched on it already bro like i'm i'm really looking for transparency like who is this person like be, be, besides the pink hair besides all the act and all that other shit like tell me who you are like can you where rap? you come from <laughs> can you rap is the real question that's like that's an interesting point and and i'm gonna we can end it on this one before we move to drake but since safari left since Meek left, Boy, listen. It's, 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 some people say coincidence, I say not. When you have these people who quote unquote were supposed, like obviously Safari has talked about like he wrote, some, like helped a lot with her writing early on. And granted, I don't always want to go off of somebody's- like it's before it's, she was signed. It's he said, to, she said, yeah. basically. But when you start seeing that these two dudes who are, uh, who one, help in, was instrumental in your beginning and two when Meek was she was when Meek Meek was at his hottest you know what I'm saying this mm-hmm. is before he uh so like got, hit, prison got with no got with Drake like oh, before oh, he um okay. did that beef with, battle with him like he was at his hottest people think Meek was like he's filled that number of, uh four slot like it was Kendrick Drake Cole and then people arguably talking about Meek being up there because how hot he was and then after they break up and after his whole tor- turmoil now you're starting to see like Nikki has been on her own since like I don't know if she did some writing sessions with Nas, but Nikki has been on her own since. And since then, you're starting to see the decrease mm-hmm. in yeah, value of production, Absolutely. value of lyrics, value of just songs. And it's interesting because I don't know if they were really that influential on in her career or if those uh, relationships and situations just put her in a bad spot creatively. 
Like she got distracted almost? Yes. I'm curious almost to figure out like to what extent has she relied on the industry to kind of carry her fame, carry her star. I think she's like, she's really relied on the industry pumping her up and like she's been the queen of hip hop for whatever. I don't... She I has don't, her fans. I don't she know that she's necessarily earned all of the credentials that she has because I respect her, but I really feel like she's been riding this way for a long time and her, her star is kind of dimming at this point. Yeah. Did you feel like that because uh, for a long time she was the only female MC on I that stature she, she for a while? She was the only female that was getting that hype. Okay, okay. I think she was the only female that was getting that hype. I think there's been a lot of different other female rappers that have been doing it. Like, y'all have mentioned all of these other names, but I think she's been getting this hype for the longest. Shit, I would ride the wave too. Yeah, shit. <laughs> I would say, I would say, ride the wave until it crashes. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of waves that are crashing, which I, 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 I predict, <laughs> I, 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 and I can, you can ask Otto, I think the last time we had a session, I predicted, like, during the J. Cole review, like, Drake's time is coming to an end. This was before the push of T shit. And, so and, and in my opinion, all right, I'm just saying, and I'm not a Drake, I'm not trying to, I'm not a Drake hater. Obviously, you know, he was great, but I'm just, like I said, everybody has runs. Mm-hmm. He had a long ass run since 2010 till now. He's had a long run. So, with that being said, what are y'all expecting? this new Drake album to sound like in the midst of the aftermath of Drake and Pusha T. And of course, we're going to touch on the Drake Pusha T shit. That shit is going to be the fire. I ain't even going to hold you. I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. Y'all got to understand, Drake is untouchable, bro. Like, this man was in blackface and he still was able to drop an album, is what I'm saying. Like, he is untouchable. He hit a kid, was able to get exposed for said kid and still had nothing done to him. Because he, because he, I would say he's the master of, you know, you see them street vendors who be having that motherfucking ping pong ball and three cups oh, and yeah. they be like, where, which one is <laughs> the it? Like, he's, he's the master. He's, the, the, he's that the ping pong ball. Like, you don't know where he, like, every time you think you got him, he gone. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, in my opinion, the got whole, resources for the whole, he did. He covered this all up by just dropping a sh- reunion video with Degrassi. That's story. it. Distractions. After, that Distractions. that Genius. nobody talked about. Anybody else, we still be like, nah, bro. Keep we keeping that same energy. Like, shit. We still we still coming at uh, Jay Z about ether. You know what I'm saying? Like, we when you ha- when you Damn, take an L, it's still going. <laughs> No, but everybody knows that was an L that Jay-Z took. But I'm just saying, like, Ether is always known as, like, the, the song yeah, that yeah. took down, like, one of the greatest rappers alive. But it's just, like, we we need to keep that same energy because motherfuckers easily forget. And this only happened a few weeks ago. This nigga got exposed in a way that we never seen him get exposed Not before. One time. We thought Meek... He ruined his, like, good boy image, quote yeah. unquote, and we that. thought... Meek thought he could do the same thing, but he didn't follow up with bars. Now somebody... We have somebody like Pusha T... Who don't who, care. Pusha T is give, dangerous. He don't, <laughs> he don't give a fuck. fuck. Like, dangerous. He don't give a fuck. And to me, what I'm expecting out of this album is... 35 with braids. I don't... I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Are you 35 never mess with a nigga with cornrows past 25. Like, that's, that's, that's a point. But well, this I'll, nigga is prepared for all the smoke right now, bro. He can take anything. <laughs> I'm expecting push. I'm expecting Drake's album to have nothing to do with this Pusha T shit because I don't want to hear nothing about it since you didn't respond when you were supposed to. Uh-huh. Niggas, niggas had the mm. the most the the biggest gangster in hip hop come out and do a press run tour about saying like this nigga got a, a a freestyle that can kill everybody career, but we ain't gonna drop it. Who to said me, that? Jay Prince. Jay Prince, if y'all uh, know, is he's real. He started. Uh, he helped start Rap a Lot Records. Basically, he was like a big pillar in the South as far as Southern music getting to mainstream, or like Southern music in general getting established in the South. So Jay Prince is well known, well connected in in hip hop, and he his son Jazz Prince is who found who found Drake and sent him to Lil Wayne. And obviously, you oh, know, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, didn't that, know that either, fun, actually. fun fact, history, history, yeah, history like, lesson, <laughs> history itself. That's how that's how it came. Like Wayne didn't see Drake. He until, didn't find. He didn't. He didn't, he didn't really Drake. originally find Drake. Oh, he, okay. He, he was able to. Uh, he did it through like somebody else. Now, to me, when you do a press release in the midst of a beef or a rap battle, you lost. When you <laughs> are exposed on blackface, you lost. The fact that you had a child this whole time and didn't speak on it, you supposed to be the most emotional nigga ever. Right. And you ain't talking about family. <laughs> he always talking about family and my talk bros about and shit. Dad, but let me ask you this, like, does he have to let the world know that he had a son? He doesn't have to, no, but, you but see it's why hypocritical. He didn't. It's hypocritical, though. That is he true. didn't talk about it because it wasn't um, his wife or his girlfriend. He... He, because he has this image. Drake has always had this image from the grassy till now that like I'm the pretty good boy. Like I don't do anything bad. I love women. I'm not a womanizer. When I feel like Drake is the biggest, the poster child of in this. That's <laughs> literally, what literally. and he be doing shit agree, underneath sure. the carpet. So because the fact that he didn't have a wife or a girlfriend that he had this baby with, and it was with a a, a porn star or a stripper. I think it was I a porn say, star. I won't label her as a porn star. I she is say, no. She, I'm not labeling her. That's what she does. That's, that's, that's her profession. That is her. That's what she does on a day to day basis. She is a porn star. That ruins that. 
bad image yeah. for him. You my know, thing, my thing is the reason why I say. I bring up the kid and he and, and granted I agree with you on most situations. You don't have to expose your whole personal life in music if you don't like if you don't want to. That's your choice because that's personal. But for him, he's come out a lot of niggas claiming like like he's come out a lot of niggas about their girl. He's came out a lot of niggas about their personal lives in general. And for for him to keep his so private, especially when he claimed that he was so public with it, that's where I have the issue. That you're not you're being hypocritical, you're being hypocritical. To your situation because you know it's not a good look on you. I think like I'm I'm just gonna try to dive a little deep into this. Like from a historical perspective, like the whole thing about blackface, y'all mentioned blackface. Mm -hmm. And from a historical perspective, like blackface is the original form of American entertainment. It goes back to the 1800s, it goes back to slavery. It goes back a very long time. And traditionally, blackface was something that black people used to do in order to entertain white audiences. Black people would dress up in blackface and they would shuck and jive and they would do all these little sambo shows. They would do this all the time. It was black people doing it was that? Black yeah. people I doing thought it was this. white people doing yeah, it. This was black people that black, were doing no, this historically. Blackface is... Is uh like the old, like the old uh, Othello film was about a white guy portraying a black man, mm. and the the story I don't know if you and the, they uh, they modernize it up. They called little, it O. Yeah, yeah when I saw that, o. that was cool. Mm. That's, I like that's that. Based off Othello, <laughs> but it's basically like black faces when white people put on a black face and try to be a character. Yeah, um, got it. But it's also it also ties to how black people had to do that as well. To get put on, it was it was a it was a over like over hyping the stereotype, if you will, like kind of putting on that red lipstick and kind of taking on these apish features. Mm -hmm. Blackface was something that black people did to kind of be the butt of jokes for white people, and they would do this during slavery times. And this can kind of carried on, and you see a lot of minstrel shows, you see a lot of this in entertainment with black people over th over the years. Drake is is nothing new in terms of being a minstrel character and kind of putting on that face. He's carried the culture for quite some time. He's been a, he's been he's been a culture icon for a very long time and I, I was one of those people that didn't like Drake when he first came out but I respect what he represents I respect all that he does and I, I know that he is going through a lot of inner struggle inner turmoil just because of like his identity he doesn't he doesn't put forth a lot of his personal stuff into his music because he understands like this is a show this is entertainment he making money cash money records baby that's what he's about I would okay so I agree with you but I also disagree with you at the same time because your point was Drake, his his sentiment was more of like it was it was supposed to, like what he said in the press release was about like, oh, I did this. I did this back in the day because I wanted to show how hard it is as black men or like a representation of like how hard, like the the story of how black people and as in actors and actresses, how we've come so far, or like how it's been hard and sometimes still is hard. And I'm like, that's cool. But you've never stated that shit in yeah, your music say, like, post this damn that, thing. Uh, and this shit came out in what, 2007? Like, seven, like yeah. so early Drake, the, like the, the, the blackface and all yeah, that. Yeah, okay. So like the early Drake, he never has spoken on black issues in the to the extent of the blackface that he just did. So for you to say that, oh, he, he like I think he just gets an easy pass because it was an easy explanation. And since we have no other evidence outside of that, then That's we have to take it. it for what it is. I think you uh, you also, like, I just don't want to be misinterpreted as saying, like, blackface is cool. Like, no, nah, that shit ain't cool. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you know, this this dude got his rise from Degrassi. He been the light-skinned nigga as the face of hip-hop forever. And, like, I feel like with that comes a lot of different uh, struggles with but colorism he, and all type of different. But he things. hasn't been. The, he's been the face of rap. He ain't been the face of hip hop to me. Cause rap, rap and hip hop is different. When I, in this perspective, hip hop is a lifestyle. It's about it's about black people, black and brown people. But you just up. said that he would never make a rap album, though. So I'm trying to I'm, I'll go ahead. Go no, ahead. I'm saying this. Is, those were his words. I'm okay. saying what uh, hip hop is a lifestyle. Hip hop is a culture. So to me, when you talk about since early hip hop, we've always talked about black issues, black struggles. But for me, to, for you to say that. You were about that lifestyle then, and I haven't heard anything. Like, what was his his biggest records have nothing to do with pro black anything? It's all about his feelings, how he dealing with a bitch, or how he is dealing with just fame in general, and how people are coming for his spot. I disagree. I disagree. That. Like, I think he's he's talked about certain issues. I like think what? with for the example? black experience, he started from the bottom. Is literally all about black oh, issues, bro. Like, you know, that, that, about the, uh, the one off of, uh, him and Future joint. You know what? what I'm saying? The, uh, it was the Grammys? last song. Not the Grammys. Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean he definitely he definitely touched on like how when people have some type of experience or like no he something. he's talked about the biracial experience and that's that's I, I guess if you want to reach then yes but we always I don't think that's we, a reach I think that's a part of a black experience that doesn't necessarily don't get nobody give a fuck bro. about biracial experience <laughs> and that is the problem right there <laughs> that's part of the issue. because let's let's be let's be frank what has being black and biracial 
have hindered you in your career when you've already been successful in acting since a child star and you're highly successful in hip in rap. So I like think his identity is just like it's questioned because he comes from Toronto, because he's light skinned, because he's so fucking different from everybody else. Like we can't relate to that shit. Like ain't nobody like it's not a whole bunch of niggas that we fuck with that necessarily coming out of Toronto and dropping albums like that, just coming off the fucking Degrassi. Like that's that's a weird experience in and of itself. And I feel like that's why people come at his identity so much because they don't necessarily understand it. And I feel like you can't hold that shit against him. That's how he came to start. And if we and we and if we talking about Black, like his issues are with black people in America. You just mentioned that he comes from Toronto. So how would he know about the black American experiences? His dad's from, from Memphis. Yeah, his dad, he spent been, summers in Memphis. He talks a lot about that. Spent summers in Memphis. But, he <laughs> but, what, but, what, but what city? What city? But what city is he representing? Always the six. The six Toronto. Six, he ain't, right. re, he ain't representing Memphis because I've seen Memphis and I ain't never seen no drink ass <laughs> nigga. <laughs> Let's keep it a buck. Fuck with Houston though. You can't. He do fuck with Houston. Houston. All right. Nah. So now we just. <laughs> what, is, what is his connection? So now he's a no. He's a nomad of hip hop. Basically. He, he get around. He gets around. I think his his he comes from Toronto. He he got his rise from Degrassi, and his fucking name is Aubrey. Like that, I still hold that shit against him, bro. Like from a, the identity perspective, I did not Aubrey. like this nigga for the same reasons that you've articulated. But as you grow and mature, and you kind of understand. And I, and, bro. and I I know people are gonna see this as like Nick, you just hating on Drake. It's like nah, I, I actually I actually like Drake's music from like when he started till now. I'm just saying like. But I have to put him in a different category now because I'm pro black now. I, yeah, I started. <laughs> it took, it took, it took a while. Shit, it took a while for me, but I'm I'm fully pro black now. It's all black, and even though Drake is black, I have to be critical of my culture because when it's re- misrepresented, I have to stand up for that to make sure that we correct all that bullshit. So, are you saying that he can't represent the culture as as what he is, his identity as a light skinned dude? As name like like my my man uh, uh, Terrence just said like. Name me one person who, or even you articulate, who has been through blackface, who has abandoned, who allegedly is a deadbeat father, and who, uh, as we know, uh, well known around, has never really uplifted black people in general in his music. How can he be a? Re- how can he be the poster child or the leader of hip hop and hip hop culture when, in his personal life, he doesn't fit that stature? Like to me, that's that's why I have to call bullshit. So yeah, we'll see it. We'll see when the album comes out, man. He's gonna have to answer all them questions. That was the question. <laughs> I'm worried about this album. <laughs> that was the question. We got way off track. No, but I'm saying I'm those, those are reasons this. why those are the reasons why I'm worried about this album too. Like, I'm worried about this album because I don't want to put too many songs on it. Didn't we see this before with Chris Brown? People, Chris Brown made like a what? It was like how many songs on that yeah, one like album? A 50 song yeah, album. it was hell. And I didn't listen to it just because who has time to sit down? And I feel like we're in that era right now where it's like uh, the seven song type of album I thing where it's like, like three skips on it <laughs> got like three skips on it that, that Chris Brown was flame man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no I, I, what I think her, her, her reason is that like we're in it like and we're gonna touch on this Short later attention in, a, span in another episode we are in a, we're in an era where sh- quality is better than quantity so with a double album, niggas always think like, oh, it's going to be 20 tracks per album. So it's going to be 40 songs in general. I think Drake is smart enough to know the market and know that he needs to do at least 10 to 12 tracks per side. Maybe even to make less it, than that. To make it digestible for the, to, for the listener. But my concern about this album is how can he address all these issues and still make uh, popular mainstream music when popular mainstream music doesn't really care about black issues like that? So if you if you talking about this pro black shit, if you talk if you gonna address how you didn't claim your son from jump, how you are have a child with a, a porn star, how you uh, came back from blackface, there's a lot of shit that he has to talk about in his album. Like you said, you might it might take it might mean too many songs on album to address everything. I mean, I guess, but y'all underestimate like how much niggas fuck with Drake, bro. Like you gotta understand, niggas love like, Drake. Niggas bro. love Drake, bro. Like I, no, I'm not underestimating him at all because my nigga AJ just said. Shit, he has his name is Aubrey. Like, <laughs> like this nigga had to be like he is the he is the exception, not the rule for a lot of things that in most in most cases hip hop would shun him he's for made, or kick him out. A, he's made a lane for a lot of niggas, bro. Like he's made a lane like for Name me two niggas he made a lane for real quick. <laughs> Logic. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, Logic. 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 If we, we want to talk about, if we if we want to be real, keep it a buck. Logic talk about the biracial experience a lot better than Drake does. So it, honestly, Logic might made a lane for Drake. I disagree with that, but I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. But that's what I'm saying. Like we can we we acting like this nigga. It to be honest, he is the second coming of Lauren Hill to me. 
Which as far as like he could do rapping and singing. You said so, a lot of like you you just hot defame, takes. You it's hot takes. This, you it's hot takes. this man name and then you compare him to Lauren Hill. No, I'm saying no. No, I'm saying like he's. I'm talking about as far as style wise. Like when you when you talk about someone who has like oh he made a lane for these people is based off their style, not what they not substance and content. I'm just talking about style wise. As far I'm as rapping, so far as to say that he made a lane for Cole. Because mm. Cole was biracial as well, and I would say mm. I would say he made that. Line. And then the whole room I goes. Say, I would go so far as to say I think Cole did his own thing. I'm, I'm, I'm a preface like that. I'm saying Cole did his own thing, but I feel like Drake stardom definitely helped make uh, Cole stardom brighter. I, I, I do. I believe that Cole, I think Cole got hotter. I was a light skin nigga trend. Like what I is? Know, I, would, I don't know if it had if you talking about biracial that. experience or like just being light skin in hip hop. I would say Cole's first album debunked your whole theory because. Cole didn't have a hit single really leading into his album like like Drake did going into Thank Me Later. Like Cole had his uh, uh, organic core of fans. Not saying Drake doesn't, but Cole's fans is like, you know, everybody always talks about Cole fans. Like they the worst fans like ever because they always say you need a thesaurus to read it, to listen to his <laughs> lyrics. But his sub his his songs and substance always have meaning. You can't say the same thing about Drake. Drake is a, a Kool-Aid ass nigga. Like you just all you gotta do is add sugar and water, and now you got not this. Always. That's I think all you he, need. He definitely, he definitely <laughs> has songs that are there are substance, but then he makes songs like fucking passion fruit. And then What's like, up? <laughs> passion fruit? I've been asking, I've been asking, I've been asking <laughs> niggas all the time when especially when his push the tea beef came out, what substance does this nigga have? Like name me say me some bars that are fire and I'll and or that would have substance, and then you can obviously have an argument there. But in my opinion, this nigga just makes mainstream radio hits. So are we saying that Drake lyrics are only good for Instagram captions? Yikes. The silence speaks for itself. The silence speaks for itself. Okay. I mean, maybe relationships, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's relatable. <laughs> he be bro. talking like, about real shit, man. I like, just, like, I, I feel like he be talking about real shit. Like, that song Sacrifices off of um, the same album Passion Fruit is on. The uh, see, More Life. Me, the one that, they life, don't even yeah. call that album, they call it a playlist. Yeah. <laughs> like, again, he's, again, he's the <laughs> exception, not the rule. He's the exception, yeah. I mean, I, I see where you're coming from. I think he definitely makes tracks with substance, but he also makes a lot of fluff, too. And I feel like that takes away from, like, what he represents, what he can do in the in the uh, the the pantheon of hip hop or whatever you want to call it, I think because he makes a lot of bullshit. Like a lot of niggas hate on Drake, and I'm one of those niggas. So you know. No, I mean like you can make bu- I'm like you can make bullshit, but don't act like you all of a sudden pro black when it's a pro black era. Because he wasn't talking. He, about- I don't think he acts like he's pro black, but I think we no. Want I'm, him saying, to. I'm, we saying, want him I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying with that statement that he dropped. When when he when he made that whole public like he posted on Instagram like all right I know y'all enjoying the circus right now but let me address this issue I did this because and I'm like nigga n- shut the fuck up because like <laughs> no you have never mentioned that shit before and all of a sudden now it's cool to be pro black it's cool to be Wakanda and all that shit now niggas want to come out with dashikis <laughs> and talk about ni- and like niggas nice for what for, like my nigga you just got exposed on some shit you over try to up- he you could tell that he tried to go conscious with songs like nice for what and God's plan and then obviously. He's clearly a hypocrite because if you talking about nice what nigga, where was your chick at <laughs> this Ooh. whole time? Ooh. If you want to, if you want to uplift women, you don't, you shouldn't even worry about what her uh, career is. That's, That's your I'm baby mom. That's why I'm hesitant mm. to put out a whole bunch of different tracks that he's been conscious on, just because this nigga's not looking good right now. Push, push, like really expose this. So man. I have a question for everybody. Uh, I just want to know what everybody's final reaction to the Drake and Pusha T beef is. Do we feel like Pusha T actually won this beef or do we just feel like Drake is making a very good strategic marketing move since his album will be dropping and he's going to use that as his pull to get people to listen to his he, new album? He won the battle. He didn't win the war. I would say okay. Pusha T. Like Pusha Pusha T, T won the battle. He, he won the battle. He didn't win the war. Obviously, we're going to see what Drake sells and, and I'm sure he's going to be number one. He no, sell sales. Yeah. yeah, sales. Yeah, we but, know his things are going to be up but in terms of you saw what Pusha T said in his yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a decisive battle though. You know what I mean? Like, although he didn't win the war, he caused Drake to become uncomfortable, which is more than what anybody, more than what Joe Budden, more than what Common did, more than what any other nigga did he pissing on him, allegedly, like more than anybody could hurt this man. Like he caused this man to come out and make a statement about an issue that nobody knew about. I feel like that's a very good battle one, to be completely honest with you. Personally, I think 
the difference between like this battle and the battle he had with Meek last summer and some of these other battles is that Push is riding Kanye's coattails, man. Like Kanye is is the the man behind good music, and you know Push got this this uh, position as president of good music or whatever. Isn't he like the president or something? Yeah, like he's that? the president, and you know he's he's still he riding Kanye's wave to come at Drake, and I feel like he's using Drake to b- boost his album sales. So like Drake touches on this a lot within his his verse on that this whole beef thing. Drake is is carrying his own shit right now. So I'm not going to say that Push won decisively because Push is still riding gay's t- coattails at this point, in my opinion. All right, bro. We have some- <laughs> <laughs> I want I to I I expound upon this more, but we're going to have to get over that. Basically, I'll just agree with his, what he said. <laughs> but moving forward, um, with this, with the, speaking of, uh, you mentioned cash money earlier. With cash money, we, we just now heard that Wayne just got out of his deal with cash money finally. Yay. It's been... I don't know how many up to years since this nigga, this nigga ain't been dropping shit platform. since then. Good for you, um, Good got, for you. <laughs> he finally got Good out of cash you, money bro. and now he he he's able to drop Carter 5 whenever he chooses to do so. Now my question is in 2018 or 2019 are we still trying to hear Carter 5? Absolutely. Oh, hell yes. Absolutely. In my opinion he needs, to, yes. he needs to scrap that album and just come out with something new. Do you think it's old? I don't, you th- okay, wait, hold on. Just Why so I'm clear. Do you, do you think it's old? <laughs> like, do you think it's the album that he made years and years ago before he was in this legal battle? I think he I think he had the Carter Five finished at one point in time and the legal battle started from there. Like from him trying to be like, all right, I'm ready for the rollout. What's up, baby? What's up, Birdman? Nah, nigga, like he rubbing his hands like, nah, nigga, this drink shit gotta go. <laughs> this drink shit gotta fly. My nigga, you gotta take a seat. And it's just like ever since then, he's been probably recording records for Carter Five, but they're obviously outdated now. Like Carter Five was supposed to drop what? 2011, 2012, or something yeah, like that. Something long time yeah. Now we now we in 2018, like going into 20, like we're already in the well, summer. Well, I hope he's smart enough to know to like re-record some songs. But and- it's in the mindset of Carter Five coming off like People, we just celebrated the 10th year anniversary of Carter 3. So niggas is still trying to hear like Wayne spit for real. Like we we hold Carter 2, Carter 3 to high standards. And we kind of like, we let Carter 4 slide because obviously he was like, all right, this nigga been hot for a while. Even though it wasn't classic like those other two records, it was still a good album. Mm-hmm. But to me, Carter 5 is in that same vein. The same way he kind of like diminished the value of the dedication series with DJ Drama. I don't want to hear Carter 5 Wayne with the Carter 5 expectations that I had back then. Because if he comes out with Carter Five, I'm thinking like this is gonna be some fire shit. The Wayne like mixtape Wayne spitting, and clearly he probably won't be in that same mindset. I don't think you. Can, I don't think you can minimize your expectations because it's still Wayne we talking about here, man. Like I think like he's a legend. This, this dude is a legend. Like it, you talk about ten year anniversary of the Carter Three. That album is fucking fire, like from front to back. <laughs> like and from from him to to minimize expectations and be on this skater dude wave. Like I'm I'm not trying to hear that shit. Is he like, still skater dude? Is that still his image? He's, he's, he's still, still, he's still, like, he's still, like, he's still having bitches suck a dick for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying oh to God, hear that. Trump fit. <laughs> I'm Ever since he said that line, niggas did not buy Trump fit again. That, <laughs> that was the joke about it. Like, nigga, you suck one. dick for that, boy. Like, <laughs> <You're> <laughs> but now, my thing is like, all right, it, the bigger question is, what is your expectations for Lil Wayne then? Because for in me, his career or and, just and, in this album? And, and, and like, uh, if you if he dropped the album tomorrow, mm-hmm. what are your expectations of it? Are you thinking in the same vein that this nigga is still a legend and still can spit, or are you saying like his time has come has come and gone? Because in my opinion. His time is coming gone. I still, I'm, I still love. I, I still love Wayne, and just because I like, basically, you sound like a hater today. I, I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> a I, real I, hater it's, today. It's, it's hot take, Nick. But I'm just saying, like, <sighs> DMX was popping back in the day, right? And niggas was riding with DMX. But in 2018, are niggas still trying to listen to a DMX album? I mean, you're talking about from like a whole different decade. Like, you understand, like, there's so many Wayne fans. Like, if you was born between a certain era, but you are considered a Wayne fan. You gotta be. At one point, you're And I'm saying I'm still a Wayne fan, but my expectations are, like, I have low expectations. If he exceeds them, he exceeds them. Then I, I have no problem with that. But I'm not going into it thinking that he's still... You know, best rapper alive. Now, Wayne. do you think that's at the fault of Wayne or just like where we're at right now? I like, think we have a, people like what's the dude with the like multicolored dreads and shit in his head? Takashi Six Nine, Six Nine, or like, like we have people like that. No, who I'm famous. Or Lil Pump, like this is not really Lil Wayne's. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, I'm saying, life is what I have. Lo- hit, what he's gone through in life is why I have low expectations because he went through some real shit. Like to have somebody who you grew up with who was a Huge part of your career to call your daddy. To call your daddy. To have a to have to for him to for Wayne to say fuck Birdman is similar to like shit. It's like if you uh 
It's like Simba saying fuck Mufasa. It's like nigga, like <laughs> are you serious? Like real talk. It's like nigga, are you serious? Like this the nigga that helped you become like it without him, you wouldn't even be a king or some not to say Birdman was that instrumental, but like he helped He one, put this nigga Wayne on. He put him on. He like you know what I'm saying? On. Like he he invested a lot of time and money into it. And not saying that Birdman des- deserves all the accolades for Wayne's career. But Wayne, Birdman but also exploited Wayne too. He exploited Wayne too. And that's what I'm saying. Like when you go through life and get that sort of betrayal, and then now you can't even be as free as creatively as you were once were. And then you see in the nigga that who you brought into the game be more successful than you are at the point of your career. It's kind of like your album has to be scrapped because I you Birdman's can't talk. career was to produce. Uh, for Don't might know what Birdman's career is. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know he made music for My, a long time. Yeah, it took just, me a while. I'm just saying like, I don't want to hear a 09 Carter 5. I need to hear a 2018, 2019 mm. Carter, uh, Carter 5. If that About is, the stuff that he just went through. Oh, that stuff he went through. And I need him to come back to the sense of like, because some people say he's the he is the uh, the king of mumble rap. He started mumble rap. With, like Lollipop was what, like mumble rap doesn't proceed before Lollipop. Like everything after Lollipop is considered mumble rap as far as that era, as far as what we say Young Thug is stylistically like Lil Wayne. It's like, that's the shit that he uh, brought in. Wow, well, I was so, way too young to be singing. So, like, oh, but we crazy. as rap fans of Wayne, we don't want, to be honest, we don't want Carter 3 Wayne. We want Carter 2, Dedication 2, uh, what is it, the Drought 3. We want that Wayne. That's what we always looking forward to, the nigga that can just kill anybody on any beat. And for me, for what he's gone through in life, I don't know if he even has that. I don't even, he, he has to get back into his creative niche again. And but who said he stopped? He, I, I he was like, probably writing and doing all types of stuff. He's still as been as DJing. He, yeah. yeah. He been so how do you know he's a DJ? Like, <laughs> and whatnot. Like on people albums, like he's been dropping for sure. Like he mm-hmm. ain't been stopping, but he just ain't had his own solo shit. You feel me? Like Solange album, he was fire on that feature. He was fire on the, uh, on Chance and shit. You feel me? Like I feel like Wayne still got it. I just feel like he just need to have that opportunity to, to present it. He dropped his cold ass verse on Tyler the Creator album. That shit was I'm gonna give him a, <laughs> no, I'm gonna give a nigga a chance. Like, you gotta remember where you was when you first heard the Carter too, bro. Like, no, I, I remember. <laughs> where were you? I you remember my nigga. I, I was. I, it was around the time I was hanging out a lot of hood niggas, and I. Was, <laughs> <laughs> and when they when when Fireman came out, bro, like oh, ain't nobody Fireman. fucking with me. Like that shit. That like nigga, I was riding the my mob, bike. the mob. That, <laughs> I was riding my Carter goddamn bike. Crazy. Like, Carter too, bro. <laughs> like Carter too is like more money on my mind. Shit, like that shit is like. That's a classic. And but for me, it's like throughout the time since Carter two till now, I have become very more objective to hip hop because I realized that niggas have waves in hip hop and niggas usually don't come back from a what they usually don't come back on top once they have been dethroned. I think the thing about Wayne is that he kind of started this big ass wave for everybody. Like you mentioned earlier, like he kind of set that framework for the mumble rap and all of this this generation that's hot right now, like, you know. They fuck with this mumble rap shit. And I think it's it's kind of hard for us to be talking about, like, we purists and we wanted to see this nigga go back to the Carter 2 bars rap type shit. I don't think that that's, that's not popping no more. Like, that's not going to sell I disagree with, with niggas like Kendrick and you just mentioned Cole I, and I, Logic. I agree. Like, I those agree, niggas sell a lot of records. I don't think that's Wayne's style, bro. Like, he made this lane for all of these niggas that's doing this mumble rap shit. Like, I don't see why he would deviate from that. It doesn't make sense so for him to So you want to hear back. mumble rap mumble Wayne? Want, that's not necessarily what I want to hear, but I don't think it makes sense for him to try to go back to that. It, it seems like if you got an easy method to make money and you're going to do this mumble rap shit, but you've gotten all of this money off of doing this mumble rap shit, like that has led to this new wave. Why would you deviate from that? Why would you take? Why would you switch the game up and go back to some of your old shit when you was a young nigga just trying to get put on? Like it just don't make sense to me. Shit, yeah, I mean, be <laughs> <laughs> quiet. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just saying. I, I don't. I, I, I realize I've been sounding like the negative Nancy throughout this whole shit about a lot of motherfuckers, but I'm just. I'm just trying to keep it a buck for as far as me when I go into it, like what I'm listening for. Now, since I'm pro black. <laughs> I gotta mention We gonna switch Shut topics up, A little bit bro. We gonna mention <laughs> in, 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 we, Since we've been talking About entertainment in general We gonna get off of music And go into <laughs> film and television And just this past week Or just earlier this uh, weekend On Friday Luke Cage just dropped season 2 Now I know a lot of motherfuckers Now Nick I, For people like me Can you explain? <laughs> <laughs> you sound like DJ Emmy For the people who don't know Explain what a black superhero is right. <laughs> Please <laughs> So Luke Cage uh, Basically If you want me to give you The quickest summary He's basically a black man In New York With superpowers And how And it, this, the series goes As far as How does A black man in New York With superpowers How does he Navigate life How does he deal with Black issues with When he is a superior black In the sense of 
He has powers. He, he, he has powers, and also he has a responsibility with those powers to his community. Uh, is it a Netflix original? It's a Netflix original. Okay. It's coming from the Marvel division, so you know uh, Marvel has a good reputation right now. And so far, season I watched season one of Luke Cage, and I liked the first half. The second half was kind of weak to me. But so far in season two, and I've only watched the first two episodes, I'm really liking the the they've elevated uh, the level of um, production and quality and storytelling in this season than they did in last season. Okay. I disagree to oh. a certain extent, man. <laughs> I'm, I mean, maybe maybe we just on like a wave where we just going to be beefing all day, but like <laughs> for whatever reason, I just disagree with that. I think the first season was fire. Now, I, I will say like, I think that there's definite changes. Um, I noticed that the first episode was directed by Lucy Liu, which yeah. I think that shit was fucking dope. Like, the first episode? The first episode is directed by Lucy Liu. I don't know if she does oh, the second entire, Lucy Liu? Oh, second, second season. season. Mm-hmm. Shut up, yeah. really? That was, that was baby mom's back in the day. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm Yo, saying? Lucy that was, that was bad. Yeah. <laughs> Lucy no disrespect. Bad. To Asian women, but like that I was the first Asian woman I liked. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, that's so dope. I think the writers, um, they definitely they did a, a writer's change uh, from the first season to the second season. So I think the content has kind of changed up a little bit. I'm not sure exactly who wrote all of the stuff for the first season, but there was a lot of different black cultural references. You talking about being pro black and stuff like that. <laughs> <I'm weak>. um, <laughs> they was mentioned. They was dropping a whole bunch of W. E. B. Du Bois, The Invisible Man. They was dropping a whole bunch of knowledge in the first season. The second season, it seemed like corny as shit. Like the first the first couple episodes that I've seen like it just seemed like it was it was a lot more corny like he did it was I'm not gonna put in a whole bunch of spoilers but this nigga was doing Luke Cage shit and eventually like he came out with like a video of some sort and he did a dab on him and I was like oh, that yeah, was so yeah. cringe that shit was no, so like, corny it, man like, it's very cringeworthy I, I would say that <laughs> but you also gotta realize his his story like his origins is of like corniness in a sense. Mm-hmm. Like he was a black exploitation comic book character. Mm-hmm. So like if you look, if you read the comic books back when he first originally came out in 2018, it looks whack as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like you've seen better things. And I think what you're touching on deals with like after Black Panther came out, niggas really reevaluated black superheroes mm-hmm. to the point where it's like, if you're not on this level of Black Panther, which is super pro black and super pro like black female lead characters, black all this, then anything else that is less than, we look at it like, bro, it's corny, it's whack. It ain't really representing what I want to see in a black superhero. So are you saying that um, Black Panther is making other black superheroes? I don't know if there's other black superheroes out there other than Luke Cage, but like making other black superheroes look corny now? In general, if they don't reach that, standard. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave that to the for y'all because y'all know I'm, I got a hot take. For that. Yeah, I was about to say like I don't think so just because like I'm not really messing with Luke Cage. I've been a DC fan personally, but I mean I like Luke Cage season one, season two was kind of corny, but I feel like Black Lightning is ste- stepping up to that. Uh, Black Lightning goes hard. Black <laughs> Lightning is the truth. I ain't even gonna hold you, but like. Also feel, available on Netflix. You know? <laughs> exactly. But yeah, like, I feel like uh, that Black Panther definitely set a standard for all black superheroes. I mean, like you got to have that specific, you know, aura, that that mood in there. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's just Black Lightning definitely over Luke Cage. Though. Well, I'm saying that because like, even though, uh, even though I do agree there were some corny moments in Luke Cage, I feel like the location and area that he's representing, which is Harlem in New York City. Shout out to New York. Like, it's like, <laughs> How many shows touch on Harlem like that nowadays? Like, we're past the whole when Harlem was popping, like, the Cameron Dipset era, the Mace and Diddy era. Like, <laughs> now, Har- like, who was really, like, ASAP Rocky is representing Harlem, but really, ASAP Rocky is representing himself as far as what he like. He's from Harlem, but to me, he's not, uh, he's not in Harlem, like, in the streets Harlem, like, I'm here every day like he's more in Paris and fashion week he's doing all this other shit like he is Harlem but right now in 2018 there really isn't like a representation of New York what they're going through as far as gentrification what they're going through as far as what do black people in New York in in 2018 really deal with and I think Luke Cage touches on that like it's like the microscope like the microscope in that world of like this is what black issues look like in the biggest city in the world so while it's corny at some point, it like you said in the first season, they touched on a lot of real pro black stuff, and I feel like, granted, you've only, we've only seen the first two episodes of the second season, so we gotta give it. We got it's thirteen episodes, so you have eleven more episodes for the story to be fully told. I think it still remains to be seen, like what's gonna happen. Like you, you mentioned, like who's telling that story of Harlem, New York? Like I'm not a New Yorker. Uh, Imani could probably speak a little bit more about this. But I will say, like, New York is going through drastic changes right now with Major gentrification and things changes. like that. So, you know, that I think that story is still being written right now. And I think that's part of the reason why we haven't seen that narrative play itself out. 
Um, so, you know, that's just my two cents. I think it's a different narrative being, re- like, written in, like, Luke Cage for the simple fact that a lot of the times in Luke Cage, if you watched it, it would be, like, a young black kid that will be around, like, the same a millennial black kid, and he'll be like, you know what, pull your pants up, this, that, and the other. This is how you're going to be great. I feel like that's a little bit detrimental to, like, the society and in, in 2018 what we're trying to accomplish as people because, like, you're trying to get us to become, like, more traditional in the sense that you you come from, like, the 70s black sports and you feel as though like pulling your pants up, getting your hair cut, blah, 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 whatever. I feel like that's just appeasing the white people to me personally. I don't feel like me drooping my pants is like any type of reason for me to be treated any differently. Although I don't agree with it, I just don't feel like those type of messages should be displayed within Luke Cage for the simple fact. Like it's just detrimental to us. Like, And again, I would say like we we still got to finish the season. We probably can retouch on this issue later. Once, once, everybody's, once finished. everybody's finished the season and be like, okay, this is what our, if it's still trash, it's still trash. If it's actually, <laughs> if it got better, then it got better. I'm not going to say it was trash. It just seemed like it's losing a lot of steam. It's losing a lot of momentum. And I, and, with with okay, so going on to film now. There was a movie that just came out called Superfly, and it's kind of like the remix version. That's how they describe it of the 1970s Superfly, which was a black exploitation movie about. I guess oh, what was he? I don't really know the full story. I just know he was like the soundtrack was fired. That's what I remember. Yeah. Curtis, <laughs> Curtis, Curtis Mayfield. One. Curtis Mayfield, one. Mayfield did the soundtrack for the first one, and that nigga is like he's yeah, incredible. He's a legend, yeah. and yeah. And then twenty, and but the movie now that's coming out now is more about it's it's filmed in Atlanta, and obviously, and it's the music. Of course it is the music. <laughs> the music in the film is curated by Future, so it's a lot of Atlanta shit. It's curated. Wait, for real? Future, yeah. Future doing what? the soundtrack. Future, what? <laughs> Future did the he EP the uh, soundtrack. So. What I've heard, I haven't seen the film, and I'm going to go see it, but what I've heard so far is that it's Cheeks. Um, <laughs> is this in theaters? Yeah, it's in, it's in theaters. I've never heard of it. It came out recently. It's, it's, it came out last week. Yeah. So it's in it's in theaters now, so go see it if you if you want to support it. But uh, so far, I've, I've haven't heard like, great reviews, and like, the main criticism that I've heard about it is that after, again, after Black Panther... People have had a set standard for not only black superheroes, but black films in general, because we've seen Black Panther, even though it's a fake fictional story, the way it represented black people was a game changer. And with movies like Superfly, where you're talking about drug dealing and and everything that surrounds that, people are like, I'm not really trying to see movies like this no more. I think there's so many different elements of black life that should be on display. And I feel like this one, Superfly, is like, that's an element of black life that needs to be put on display. And the fact that Future's doing the soundtrack, that just, that in and of itself makes me want to go see this movie. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about like what everybody else thinks about it, but personally, I want to go see this movie just to see like, you know, how they redo the film. Because the first film was, it was, it was a black exploitation film and it looked negative. It did a lot of negative things in terms of the violence in the black community. And it did a lot of things in terms of shaping how white people view black people. So, you know, I don't know how they're going to change that perspective of in 2018. A lot of remakes are bad, though. So, you know. Yeah. Every time a remake is done, it's always, not always, let me not say that, but like 90% of the time, it's terrible. So, like, this was like a historic, uh, you know, movie in terms of like, they did the old one, everybody fucked with it, now they're doing a new one. It's just going to like ruin the image altogether. And it's, it's, I don't think it can live up to what the old one was. Oh, no. I don't think he can do that, but I don't know. It, it remains to be seen because I don't think any of us have seen yeah, it. Yeah, we. I, we should take a field trip. I can't say I'm pro black and I ain't see super fly. That, <laughs> that, that, that don't sound right. So I, I see. All right, my car can be revoked for this episode, but and I, when we come back, I'm gonna see everything. You know, yeah, my car every, can be revoked for every episode. Right, bro. Wait, <laughs> that's, you know, say that's that's your opinion. But, <laughs> but from what I'm for, for my from that uh, point of view that I brought up, I think that's very interesting because. When you say we we need to see all representation of black people in in film, so far what you're talking about is either we're superheroes or we're drug dealers. I haven't really outside of Moonlight, and even then that was a uh, that, uh, was, a that was a drug movie. that was a drug dealer <laughs> that, that was, was a drug dealer movie, movie for real. Bro. It was a, it was a it was a gay trapper basically. Like <laughs> like what's up? You want to give me the buck? There like the black experience, the full black experience has still yet to be told as far as. Black people in uh, and maybe dear white people touched on it a little bit, like as far as a different representation of black. I think there's parents. been a bunch of different representations. But there's only been two that's that are known to be successful. Either we're black drug dealers or we're black superheroes. So 
we need to have something in the middle. And I th- and I think so. Super- what would be in the middle? Yeah, I'm and, about to say like it's kind of impossible to really like, like portray the, the entire like. Black what about experience. what about uh, has there ever been a movie about black comedians and the rise of being a comedian, like being black and being in comedy? Would you go see that? It movie? Sounds like you said something like you don't produce. Didn't they have like a Richard Pryor movie about that? But Richard Pryor movie hasn't come out like a legit Richard uh, Pryor movie. Like, yeah. um, if Kevin Hart made a movie about the rise of being a comedian, would you go see that movie? Exactly. If Tiffany had us, <laughs> if Tiffany had us made it, I'll go see it. I'm okay. I, 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 okay. I've I've uh, purchased enough Kevin Hart tickets to say I've, I've supported <laughs> Kevin Hart. <laughs> like I'm I'm cool on his story, like in his perspective. I'm just saying, like there's other the fact that we are, the fact that we have to me it sounds like we've kind of settled for what we get when it comes to black movies. And to be honest, the aftermath of Black Panther shows that we need to exceed expectations because. Now that we know that we can sell in every country with us just telling our stories by black directors, black writers, black costume designers, black all this, we can we have so many other stories to tell. I think there's a there's a much more of a variety than you hinting at. Like I think that there is somewhere in the middle. Like that movie Get Out. Like uh, Jordan Peele wrote that movie. Exactly, and that's, but, that, that's but, just on like a whole different element exactly, of the black experience. But, but exactly, and that's and those are the movies that I'm talking about. Like we, you need you say so. You're suggesting that we need more of those. More we need those more movies that come out of left field that we weren't expecting. Because that, that wasn't even a topic that we thought about people using the, the, exactly. the black man's or body using, as a tool. You using know, like, horror film to talk about the black experience. Like that's yeah. something that's that's creative. And like how yeah, many can do it we though. know we can count up. We've seen so many like back in the 90s, drug dealer, black drug dealer movies was prevalent. You know what I'm saying? We've seen that already. What's next? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm interested to see if Donald Glover comes out with a movie, man. Donald Glover, like he that the, it is. It's, it's called it's called crazy. Lando Kester. <laughs> 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 they come out with a Lando movie. <laughs> you ain't trying to see Star, a you black Star Wars. No, thank you. <laughs> 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 but no, I agree. I think I think Donald Glover got something cooking. I think Issa Rae got something cooking. I yeah, think, yeah, for I sure. think Barry Jenkins got something cooking. I think Ava Duvernay got something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got Ryan Coogler got to top whatever he come out with next, man. That shit finna be fire. Ryan Coogler, like, he he the dude right now. He 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 can do no wrong in Hollywood. Yeah, like, exactly. So I'm just saying, like, but but like with Creed, Creed was a black like we've never seen a movie about oh, Creed a black. Creed 2's coming out. Yeah, Creed yeah, 2's yeah. coming out. We've never seen a movie about a black boxer, especially coming from the white world of Rocky. Like we he just created a whole new franchise with the black. Uh, oh, we've seen plenty of black boxer movies now. Come on. No, I'm just saying. I'm talking about in like a in a, a youthful black boxer. Okay, I understand. Not like uh, not like Denzel and Hurricane or like uh, Ali, <laughs> Ali and stuff like that. Uh, those are obviously like historical fillers, uh, uh, figures already. But I'm talking about like a, a fictional story like Creed is. Like Apollo Creed wasn't a huge focal point of Rocky. He was in it. But he wasn't the huge focal point of Rocky. The fact that now that his son is, it speaks volumes for me. Mm. Coming from Ryan Coogler. I'm interested to see what the sequel looks like. They brought, uh, they brought back Ivan Drago. And I, I don't know. I just hope it doesn't become a... Because after Rocky, like, three, it got real, like, cheeks after yeah, that. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm hoping that doesn't rub off on Creed, too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I guess shit. That we had some other things we wanted to talk about, but shit, we gonna we gonna do a part two of this. We yeah. we still haven't caught up with uh, with what's going on. And if if anybody else has any topics and stuff to cover, they can reach us at, at ndr five one three um, on uh, Instagram, and they can also reach us on Facebook as well. Uh, at no disrespect, just DM us if you have any topics that you're really interested in. Um, we love to interact with you guys on social media. Yeah, so. and you can you can interact with us. Uh, my personal Instagram is uh, w e s i s i number eleven uh, i g. Uh, for the guests, y'all go ahead, pub y'all stuff. You see if y'all people want to talk to you, or you shaking your head. He like, said no. Oh, <laughs> he said no. On Twitter, uh, <laughs> so Terrence P. You know, uh, Facebook Terrence Padgett. You know, things like that. I'm on Instagram at at in the hood seven six. You can check out my DJ mixes on my bio, my bio. The link in my bio. Um, the latest mix is the American Dreamer. And follow Kirk Cooks if you're trying to get a plate. I got you. <laughs> hey, she Paula Dean in the kitchen right now. I'm in the kitchen, nigga. I do catering services, on meal plans, so do whatever you like. You so. do meal plans? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to talk to you after this podcast. Same list. Same list. <laughs> All right, and that's NDR for this week. Uh, we're going to be back next for the next episode. We're going to do, there's a lot of music that we didn't touch on mm-hmm. that we're going to do a whole review about. So catch us on the next review. It's going to be called A Good Review. And we'll explain more of that later. But... Follow us at NDR again and holla at us. Bye. Peace.